I'm Natasha Thompson, President and CEO of the Food Bank of the Southern Tier, and we're so excited to be launching this new format of our former town halls that allow us to connect and educate others during this unprecedented time of COVID. Um, so throughout this summer education series, we're going to be speaking and welcoming uh, several of our closest partners who helped us expand our services in response to COVID. And I'm pleased to introduce you to one of those partners today, Mark Brudeau. And uh, Mark, for those of you who don't know, is the Director of Food Service for Brunteo Gabosis. He serves as the President of the School Nutrition Association, and he's also a member of the Governor's Food Policy and Hunger Task Force. Mark has three decades of experience in child nutrition, and he's created a highly successful school food program that manages cafeterias across 15 districts in Broome and Tioga counties. He's developed the Rock On Cafe, a marketing program to promote increased consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat or fat-free milk. Mark also served on our board of directors for nine years and is currently a member of our advocacy committee. Thank you for joining us today, Mark. Thank you, Natasha. Glad to be here. So uh, you oversee a huge food service operation uh, across 15 diverse school districts. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the students and the communities that you serve and just give us a sense of the scope of your operation? Sure, be glad to. So we, we operate districts in Broome and Talia County. Uh, we go from Deposit, which is a far eastern part of the county, all the way to Tioga Central Schools. So uh, it's almost a 70 mile, you know, almost an hour drive from one district to the next. And so we have 15 districts. Uh, in those districts, we have about 32,000 students. And of those 32,000 students, 63% of them qualify for free or reduced price meals. Uh, and those are pre-COVID-19 numbers mm -hmm. uh, before the pandemic. So we're expecting that number to go even higher uh, as the school year goes on. Uh, we're thinking it might hit 70% possibly um, because of the, uh, the effects of the pandemic. Uh, on a daily basis, we serve 20,000 lunches and 13,000 breakfasts each and every day. Wow. Um, one thing that folks might not know about us is that uh, in school meals, we are completely self-sufficient. So when you pay your school, pay, school tax dollars in the fall, none of that money goes for the school lunch program. All that money goes for you know, education. We survive completely on the meals that we serve. Mm -hmm. so on the average, a school lunch is about $3.50 that we get total for each meal. And for breakfast, about $2.30 for each meal. And each meal, that $3.50 or $2.30 has to cover food costs, payroll, fringe benefits, miscellaneous expenses. Mm -hmm. um, so we really run on a short budget. But we take a lot of pride in what we do. Uh, we do a lot of local uh, grown products. Uh, we really have a strong farm to school program. We do a lot of promotions around that. We really believe in supporting our local economy and helping educate the kids know where the food comes from. Uh, but we're proud of the job that we do. Uh, we think our job is extremely important. Uh, we feel without what we do, um, our kids will not grow, will not learn, and potentially putting the future of the country at risk uh, because you know, what we do every single day. So we take a lot of pride in it and we think it's a very important part of the education process. Can I just reiterate the fact that you guys are providing kids with a healthy, well-balanced lunch for basically the, the price of a, you know, large latte? Exactly. You're exactly <laughs> right. You know, if you go to Starbucks, you cannot buy a coffee like that for $3.50. So yeah, holy cow. That's amazing. So Broom Tioga Bosis has been a partner of the Food Bank for over 15 years. We've worked together for a long time. Can you talk about some of the ways um, that we've partnered over the years and, and what that's meant for Bosis and uh, the children that you serve? Well, absolutely. So we started back, as you said, 15 years ago when you and I were both at high school, of course, because we were both so young. <laughs> that's um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we started back with a pilot program at Johnson City Schools. Uh, Ray Dennison, who was my mentor, uh, God bless him, God rest his soul, uh, he started the backpack program at Johnson City Schools as a pilot uh, for the whole community. And uh, through success and through the popularity, and thanks to the expansion of the food bank, the food bank expanded that program to all 15 districts that we support. Mm -hmm. 
tremendous program, tremendous success. We've seen the impact and the positive impact is how it had our kids uh, for the weekend. And so from that program, we expanded just a couple years ago. We are piloting a new program. Uh, we are piloting a, uh, a food pantry at one of our districts in Binghamton, uh, over at BOCES, our, our East Learning Center. Uh, kids are loving it, families are loving it, uh, real success there as well. So we're hoping to expand that uh, food pantry into one of our elementary schools in Binghamton this year. But another, another tremendous model that we're seeing tremendous growth and success. Uh, we've partnered together uh, for many years promoting summer meals uh, through the food bank. You know, we know how important summer meals are for kids who are not in school. You know, and when they don't have a regular meal, two, day, two meals a day at school, they're lacking that. So we promoted summer meals for, many, for many years. Um, this last year and this year, uh, we received some grant money and with your support, we've been able to do a special program in Tioga that's not happening anywhere else. And uh, during a summer meals program, uh, summer meals we focus on kids. We don't, we're not supposed to provide family meals. But through a grant program uh, and with, with your help, we are providing meals to families also in the summer through a summer lunchbox program. Again, tremendous need in our community and that program has shown some very, very successful and a lot of popularity. But I think the, one of the most impactful things that we've done as a partnership is when we created the Broome County uh, Child Hunger Task Force. Uh, BOCES and the Food Bank partnered together and we brought in many community partners whose main focus was reducing or eliminating child hunger. And we came together as a coalition, as a partner, uh, with no financial incentive, no, you know, no financial backing, just once a month or two times, two, three times a year, we get together and talk about how we could partner to reduce childhood hunger. And we want to do that by using what programs are currently available through federal programs, state programs. And through that, we saw tremendous growth and success uh, in school programs. A uh, couple things that we want to focus on. One, we saw um, a tremendous need for school breakfast. You know, we talked about, you know, we're feeding 13,000 kids right now for school breakfast. Before the Hunger Task Force, we were feeding about 6,065 or 6,500 breakfast. So a very underutilized program. But through the advocacy work and education of the task force, uh, we started breakfast in the classrooms. Uh, we started getting kids free breakfast. And from our work at the task force, we expanded breakfast uh, by double almost, from 6,500 to 3, 13,000 breakfast every single day. And that's from our active advocacy work. And that was one example of the committee. Uh, summer meals was another program that we really focus on as a, uh, as a coalition. And through that, uh, through the work of our, work, of our, our team, we increased uh, summer meal participation as far as the number of sites that had, had summer meals by 45%. So originally when we started, only five districts housed some type of summer meal program. Now 13 of our 15 districts ho house or host a summer meals program. So tremendous growth in that as well. And the final program that we, we expanded because of the task force was after school snacks. Uh, we saw growth in after school snacks of 300% um, after the coalition started to work and advocate for those programs. So those programs had a tremendous impact on hunger in our community. And uh, so many teachers and educators thanked us, especially for breakfast. Uh, breakfast in the classroom had a profound impact on our students and our education process. Um, our teachers really said that they saw improved attendance from our students. They saw better test scores um, on standardized testing, uh, less trips to the nurse's office, and kids just being, behave, being better behaved in the classroom on a daily basis. So uh, from our work together, cooperating and working as partners, we really had a positive impact on our kids in the community. Yeah, it's tremendous. I, I just like to call attention to the fact that, you know, while the food bank serves a significant number of children through our emergency food programs, uh, it pales, what we do pales in comparison to what uh, school food service uh, is doing every day. So um, it's just incredible. Um, which brings us to March, right? So when schools shut down in March, 
your districts had to completely shift their food service operations within 48 hours. Yes. 48 hours to continue providing meals to kids. Yeah. Can you describe some of the changes you had to implement and what that meant for your staff and for the community? Yeah, uh, that's the few many, so some days that you'll never forget in your life. And uh, that Saturday in March is one of those days I'll never forget. Uh, the county executive called us in uh, and said, I'm, I'm closing the county down and schools are closed effective Monday. And uh, we expect you to feed kids. And uh, the team did it. I, I mean, our team, our, our food service team and our Rock on Cafe team is amazing. In 48 hours, we worked all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and turn over the program to uh, feed our kids. Uh, first thing Monday morning, uh, we went from a model where we were feeding kids uh, daily in a classroom setting, or not a classroom, but in a cafeteria setting, a breakfast every day, a lunch every day, to a grab and go setting in a parking lot uh, where families would come up and grab three or four days of meals uh, at, a, at a time. You know, so we, we switched very quickly. And it was, it was amazing uh, what the staff did and the community uh, was so appreciative of what we did. The outpouring of, of positivity and appreciation. Uh, we saw a tremendous amount of thank yous on Facebook. One district uh, did a special thank you to our district and, and posted it and I gave them certificates for the food service staff. So the community was so appreciative of what we did. Um, it's amazing. And the cafeteria staff and the team never once complained. You know, they were considered essential employees. They were putting themselves and potentially their families at risk to come into work every day, but they knew how important their job was to their families that they serve and the kids they serve. So they came and they did it in a positive way and making sure the environment was friendly for the kids when they came and got their meals. Yeah, un unbelievable. And, and that continued through, through the summer. It's happening now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So in addition to preparing and distributing millions of meals to students, right, um, BOCES Food Service has done so much more to feed families. Can, can you talk about some of the other ways that schools have worked to feed kids and families during this COVID time? Yes, absolutely. So when we shut down, we, on an average day, we would serve kids. Again, our program is to feed kids every single day. So we fed on the average between seven and 9,000 students every single day on the average, which is almost you know, between 16 and 18,000 meals every single day in an emergency setting in a parking lot. So but we just saw the need growing as you, know, you saw on the TV, you know, our lines you know, of folks waiting for food at, at food banks. And, and we've seen it through our distribution at the food bank. You know, we've seen folks come an hour, two hours ahead of time to line up to get those food boxes that the food bank did such a great job providing to our communities. So we felt that, you know, we were, you know, we had over 50 sites throughout the two counties. And we felt, you know, we have to do more. We can do more for our families. So as you and I know, partnerships and relationships are so important. So through our partnerships and through our relationships, we were able to bring in some amazing food. Uh, the food bank was our main partner that we got great food from. You know, the food bank, um, change the model so quickly from the backpack program to family packs. And we got so many, I don't even know how many thousands and thousands of, of family boxes that we received from a food bank. And we distribute that to our sites. So we either take those food boxes and hand them out at our meal sites, or we would go and actually deliver those boxes to our family when we delivered their lunches for their kids. Um, on top of that, the food bank gave us God, I think it was 12,000 bags of apples, uh, over 6,000 containers of apples or of yogurt, and uh, 22,000 containers of New York grape juice, uh, grape juice that was made with New York grapes. Uh, along with that, uh, through other partnerships, uh, we gave a, a lot of other food away to families. And this is above and beyond the breakfast and lunches that we did. Uh, when all said and done, about $1 million in extra food was given to our families um, during between uh, March and July. Now, uh, that cost us no money. That was all through donations to the food bank and through our partnerships. Uh, it did cost us labor. 
But fortunately, through our, again, through our, our relationships, uh, we received grants from the Community Foundation of South Central New York to pay for that labor, to help pay for that labor so we could have those meals for our families to give out. But again, it's, it's through our partnerships and through relationships that we could do that. And we just have a great community. Our community folks are so giving and so supportive. And they know how important is a daily meal to our families and our community partnerships and our families who could really react and helped us in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you guys are currently distributing some boxes, CFAP boxes from USDA. Yes. Right, that you've been getting. And yeah. then you hook up with Upstate Milk and do milk distributions. And Yep, we also, good good point. We, we yeah. did over 12,000 gallons of milk. Um, <laughs> so we had three tractor trailers of milk back up to our dock. Yeah. And um, we handed that out to our families. Uh, we were able to hand out food boxes, a combination of either a produce box, and these boxes are all 25 pounds of food. Yeah. So either produce box, a dairy box, or um, a meat box. And in the beginning, we were, we were distributing almost 4,000 of those boxes every week. We're down to still about between two and 3,000 boxes every week that we're giving out to those families. But it's the needs out there, and the families are really, really appreciative of what we're doing. It's really incredible, Mark. Um, so looking ahead to the fall, which many of us are, um, and what's going to happen uh, with schools reopening, uh, you know, there's so many unknowns. Um, because of this, how are programs like yours preparing? We started, we've actually just started preparing a lot uh, in the last week and a half. Uh, the governor on Thursday released the guidelines for us um, to open up. And we have to have a plan back to the state education part by July 31st. Mm -hmm. And the plan has to con con consider three models. One, where every child is in school as usual. You know, how can we achieve that with social distancing and students wearing masks and all the safety protocols in place? Uh, another one is a hybrid model where you know, maybe half your kids are in school, half your kids are at home. Uh, and then a completely uh, virtual model where every child is at home. Mm -hmm. um, we believe most districts are probably going to go to a hybrid model. Um, I know one district is going to do uh, all the elementary kids every single day. And then uh, the secondary level every other day. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen one, one model where um, half the kids are going to go two days a week. The other half of the kids are going to go two days a week. And then one day of a break in between to really do a thorough cleaning. Uh, but no matter what model there is, uh, we have to feed every child. You know, so obviously, if every child's in school, we, that's the model we're mo most used to. We have to really do it in a, a, a different model of our safety. For example, you know, our, our staff is gonna have to wear uh, the face shields. Yeah. Um, we're, we're taking away, you know, when our kids come through line, they, take in, they type in the pin pad, their ID number. We're taking that away because we just don't have the capacity to keep cleaning that every time. Our vending machines are going to be shut down, you mm -hmm. know, because we just can't clean clean quick enough. Uh, but the hybrid model is probably the model we're going to do the most. So we have to provide meals for the kids in school, as well for the kids that are learning at home. Wow. And that's going to be the most challenging model for us. But again, our team is up for the task. You know, we have such an amazing administration, all of our districts, uh, again, I've talked about it before, but the cafeteria staff, they'll do whatever they have to do to get food to our, to our kids. So the next six weeks are going to be a lot, uh, but uh, we'll be ready no matter what model we do come September. Um, if we're allowed to open, uh, the governor will come out the first week of August and let us know if we can open or not. So if he gives us the green light uh, the first week of August, we'll be ready by September one way or the other. Wow. Wow. Mark, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. And uh, what you do is, is, has always been inspirational, but especially during this time. Thank you. Well, thanks, Natasha. And for me, thank you and your entire team as well. Uh, what you do is amazing in general. There's a reason why you were the 2017 Food Bank of the Year. Hey. But, uh, <laughs> but during this, this pandemic, and what you did from March to now for these families, I don't know how you do it, but, but you and your team are so amazing. 
and thank you for what you do for the community. So I had a great time.